last year, uh, I came before the, uh, I didn't come before the committee, I actually presented a proposal um, for vet vet. This is an idea, there's no original idea, so this was stolen from another university out on the west coast. We have about a thousand veterans on our campus. Uh, those are non-traditional students, typically. They come with varied experiences uh, and the experience of having been in combat in most cases. And so they, are, they provide unique mental health challenges. Uh, they provide challenges for getting them through the coursework and graduating. And so the idea with VetNet was to twofold, create funding or have a funding source to provide workshops delivered in the way that veterans will actually access them. They won't come to the counseling center. They will not seek help that way, typically. Uh, it's considered to be asking for help and I'm weak and there's something wrong with me if I have to go for help. So we created three workshops, one about, and we, we got the information about what our veterans needed from the vet rep uh, working in the one stop center. They stress out over academic performance and in-classroom behavior because they are older. A lot of times they hear very negative comments about, well, you chose to go do that, so you suffer the consequence. And they hear some pretty negative remarks. So we did one on academic skill success in the classroom. Uh, Shannon Mosley of, uh, in our office has taken some additional training on how yoga is being used to offset PTSD symptoms. She did a segment on that, and then I did one on how your service impacts your relationships when, once you come back from deployment. Many of the spouses and significant others of veterans will tell you the person who left is not the person who comes back, and it never changes. And so they have to reimagine how their relationship is going to work. So we created the workshops. We're delivering those every semester. And then the goal was to have a symposium on our campus to train not only our staff to, to better serve veterans, but to be a leader in the, in, in the state and offer this to other counseling center staffs and to licensed professionals in a 28 county region around our university to better prepare them to serve veterans. So this is designed to help veterans. Um, that symposium is planned. It, it will occur on the 28th of June here in the building. We have two incredible keynote speakers. Kevin Briggs is a veteran, but his most recent occupation was he was a patrol and then sergeant for the California Highway Patrol assigned to the Golden Gate Bridge, and he literally saved people from jumping off the bridge. Some were veterans, some were not. But he has a unique story in that he, he weaves his veteran status as well as his uh, status as a, as a California Highway Patrol officer saving people's lives. And then Brian is a young man who uh, is at Rutgers now, but he was wounded in uh, Tukrit and his wounds healed, but he realized that he was carrying around PTSD. And so he talks about his battle with P PTSD. Uh, so we'll be, this one, Evan, we will be charging licensed mental health professionals to, uh, to pay for their continuing education hours, and they'll get six hours of continuing education for mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. So again, we're trying to lead in the, in the community, in the region, and provide our staff as well with advanced cutting-edge training to better serve these thousand students, about a thousand students on our campus. And I'll answer any questions you have. Okay. Open up the questions. Yeah, I just have one. I know there's a lot of money from Hazelwood. Have you tried to link this to that funding at all? No. This last year was a pilot attempt. Uh, we'll, we'll host it this year, and then again, depending on what, the idea is for that to be self self supporting, so that the fees that were charged that will it will actually self support itself. Uh, but no, we we haven't moved beyond this first preparatory uh, stage of hosting this first one to really see what the climate is. Um, but good, good point, Lynn. Thank you. In yes, regards sir? to the uh, pilot in the previous fiscal year, what was the response by the student veteran population on that? We had about 20 veterans that came to the actual center, highly engaged. 
very appreciative. Um, veterans are a unique, and I am a veteran, so I can I can say this. Veterans are a unique group of people. They many of them have seen things that you and I will never see, and that impacts how they show up in the world and how they talk about their experiences and what they what they will talk about. Um, and so we hope that as we do more of those, you know, the numbers will grow. We did it in the veterans lounge, which is not a huge space, but we went to we went to their space rather than having them try to come to our place. Are you asking for enough money? Uh, Let's just say I felt like we were, it was going to be a hard candy Christmas this year, so I didn't overly ask. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we that our first symposium will generate enough funds combined with that and, the, and asking for a lower amount that that will, uh, again, and really, hopefully, next year, I hope I don't have to ask for any money for vet, and I'm hoping it sustains itself. Okay. Uh, but Is I did. Well, I've had rollover because we're about to spend it all for this, this first one, but... Uh, I'm hoping that by charging for the CEUs for the licensed counselors, that will, you know, that will replenish the funds so that we can reach out to new speakers next year. Yes. Hey, um, I know that about a year ago we increased that university services fee by five dollars mm -hmm. at counseling center. We see some piece mm -hmm. on that, and there's supposed to be a second year of the program, so it means that you're going right. to increase an additional revenue for the counseling center. Right. Will that be able to be used to help offset this convert? That's a, that's a good question. This because I obviously am the assistant director of the counseling center. I don't want to steal Dr. Clinton's thunder because she's coming on Monday to present her 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 facts and figures for the counseling center. Um, but those funds, those dedicated funds that we receive between protocol, which is our after hours crisis, counselors on, on call mm -hmm. after hours, and our psychiatrist, those funds are gone. But, so those do pay for those things, that's a welcome gift, but that that money isn't there to like go toward this. Right. I, I thought and, I should just ask because it looks like this yeah. program is self-sustaining. You yeah. know, your revenue and uh, expense projections look like you're bringing even and more. Yeah, I think uh, in her budget, you know, she shows some money for outreach, which are typically depression screening, disordered eating screening, um, alcohol and other drugs. You know, we we do have some programming costs in there for the counseling center. Could it eventually be rolled into it? Yes, if we, you know, if this one pays for itself, then we wouldn't have to ask for any money for, for this particular program. Yes? What is the type of program, um, I guess, put us in terms of services that we offer compared to other universities within the region? So like UTA, UTD, um, UT Tyler, for example. So in having something like this, I guess what I'm getting to is, does this make us unique? Or is this something that other universities in our region are already doing? Well, or do we know? I don't know specifically. I know that every one of us that have a license have 24 to 28 hours a, 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 a licensing period of continuing education that we must have. So we must keep upgrading our skills. As and I think you know this too from family members, right? Uh, so as far as us, we constantly are trying to upgrade the skills of our staff to best serve our students here. What I'm hoping this will do is attract other counseling centers in this area. I'm going to really push Maggie down at A&M and their big counseling center to try to get some of their staff to come up and, and let us be leaders in leading training in, in, in a training out outreach. Um, every every center probably is doing some sort of training. I don't know that they are also as the center hosting the training and saying. We're using this selfishly to upgrade our skills, but we're also uh, trying to lead in our community, uh, community mental health. So it would be safe to say, though, that regionally this would have an impact that is perhaps innovative. Two years ago, we went, all of, all of our staff during the summer went to uh, Dallas County Community College because they brought in a training for, specifically for veterans, and there were counselors from everywhere. So I'm hoping the same effect is going to happen here. Won't know until we do it the first time. So, is this based on needs that Dustin has helped identify from the students he's working with? From yes, the we. I, I have a great rapport with both Dustin and the the Student Veteran Association officers. Matter of fact, they will be a part of the panel discussion during the noon hour with Brian. Uh, 
and talk about their experience as veterans on our campus and what they need, what they would hope for, or what would help them even uh, improve. So. Yes, Evan. Could you could you speak to to the to the effect of what this would have? You know, um, I know that the suicide rate when it comes to veterans is higher than the general population. Um, they different experiences, people don't know how to deal with them. So so what benefit would this A bring to the veterans and then B what it would bring to the campus overall? That's a great question. Uh, yes, 22 veterans a day commit suicide. That's the current daily statistic. Uh, have we lost any veterans on our campus? Not that I'm aware of. I, I, I can't say that conclusively, but I don't think we've lost anyone. So specifically, the, the speakers that are being brought in are going to bring unique training about working with veterans that we will be afforded sitting through those six hours of, of training. So it will immediately upgrade the skills of the seven counselors in our center. Uh, that'll be a direct additional benefit to support our veterans on our campus. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, it will allow our center to be a leader in this region of making sure we're providing training for other centers, which will also help other veterans. I know we're concerned about the money we're spending for our students. Uh, but it's, it's twofold. It is to enhance our skills, to better serve veterans on our campus, and to be a leader in our field in the area. So the implication is that not only are you going to, to address the issues of veterans on our campus, but also perhaps alleviate the stress and the, the damage that you know student, not, students or individuals, citizens of this area may have through the, the growth of this. Well, the, the, the mailing that we are, we already have the database uh, prepared for the mailer to go out. In a 28 county area around us, there, there are 6,500 licensed mental health professionals. If only 2% of them show up and pay the fee, those are people that have had additional training because veterans can go to private pay people too. And, yeah. and that, I think, is changing pretty rapidly right now. Uh, and so not only is it here on the campus, but a spouse of one of our students may be seeing a private pay counselor in one of these counties around our area. And so I think indirectly, but purposefully, we're also reaching out to upgrade those skills too. Got about a minute. Any other questions for Ned? I just want to support this because I'm overseeing Dustin's um, master's thesis right now. He's done a need survey of the veterans he's dealing with in yeah. the veterans office. And this, this campus is still so far from meeting yeah. their needs that this to me yeah. really is a necessary program. And it's, it's somewhat schizophrenic for me to be in one moment talking about gender and sexual minorities and another being talking about veterans, but it's two populations I love to serve. And so, obviously, when you have passion about something, I'm not afraid to come and ask for money. <laughs> okay, that's time. Thank you all very much. Thank you.